<laughs> Jesse <laughs> Watson. Now then, you're joining me in France, of all places. What am I doing here? Well, I'm in my German farmer friend's workshop, and I'm building a support vehicle for my doppelganger to drive when I make my grand megalithic tour. I'm planning to fly around the north of Europe, uh, coming from France, travelling through France, visiting megalithic sites. I'll be flying, obviously, dropping in, making a few films, flying out. My old doppelganger will be following me in the van. I'll go up through France, through Germany, fly across the Baltic, then fly through Sweden and Norway, visiting their megalithic wonders of the world, and then around, well, if I get that far, hopefully I will, which will be pretty amazing. There might be no nights there. It might be daytime all the time. Um, right up there. And then, yes, down into Finland to see my YouTube buddy, The Man. And uh, with a bit of luck, he'll be joining me to make a few videos around me megalithic sites in Finland. So, a grand megalithic tour of, uh, of Northern Europe. Maybe, eventually, I'll be able to go further afield. I want to go back to Britain and do some more around there and whatnot. But right now, um, it's the first time I've been out of England for four years since, all the, since the apocalypse. And uh, I have a desperate urge to um, enjoy a little liberty and go on a, uh, take a grand flight. So, what am I doing here with my support vehicle? An old Citroen dispatch. My doppelganger's all right with it. He's a steady driver. Just been building myself, been modifying this roof rack. This beast. Look at that. I've got, I've welded on hooks to my roof rack. So I can lash down, or my doppelganger rather. He can lash down the uh, megaliths if any need to be taken home for repairs. We can stick them on the roof and lash them down uh, with the old trucker's hitch. Now, with hooks, it'll be fast and efficient. <laughs> you know me, I'm right into efficiency. At the present minute, I've got my roof rack sorted. I'm just building myself this little, excuse me, solar panel rig here. They are all self-contained on this little roof rack I found. Little, uh, they're all set on that swiveling bar, and I'm just working out how to fix them at 45 degrees. I'm going to build a little armature in here coming up, so when that lifts up, the armature will lock into the side probably, and uh, lock them up at 45 degrees. And then that whole self-contained rack, so to speak, that will be mounted on the front of the big roof rack up here I've got myself it's all made out of bits and bobs I've got myself this old exercise bike uh, pedal system actually of all things but I've put, cut the pedal off here that was a pedal and there was a pedal on the other side here I've cut the pedal off welded on this bar and this the clever thing about it is because it's an exercise bike it's got this tensioner to increase the friction when you're pedaling but I'm using it as a locking system so this will be welded on underneath the roof rack um, and then the this armature swivels and because it's got these uh, this locking system on it I can lock it so it doesn't spin around when I'm driving obviously
always disconnect the alternator before you start welding on your car. Or you'll knacker the job. Yeah, you see. It's the high ampage of the welder. Will blow all your electrics otherwise. It's not touching anything, is it? No, maybe I'll just get this little plastic cup to be sure. Those wires can sit in there so they don't... And there's no chance of them touching anything. Right. Bada boom! <laughs> there we go! Solar panel rig, all sorted. He's pretty quick to set up. 
Very efficient. We'll waste no time there. The doppelganger will have everything charged. Anyway, as I was saying, moving on. Instead of having to park across the road so that my solar panels are pointing south, which can cause problems, I can park my van and then swivel my solar panels to point directly at the sun so that my doppelganger can keep the cameras charged for when I land and we commence filming. There we go. On the back, I'll be, uh, I've will be. i got, well, I have actually got a pedal and pop moped that I would really rather like. It's pretty crazy, but I'd really like to build a little crane arm with this block and tackle to lift my um, pedal and pop moped and keep that on the back of the van. But I think that's going a little bit too far. So I'm just gonna stick with a support bicycle for my doppelganger to ride. Um, got a little bicycle, old bicycle roof rack from a, all from junk shops and uh, whatnot here in France. Got that little roof rack that'll get modified and welded on the top so the bike can be quickly taken on and off. And then I've got this uh, old chest there that'll get bolted on the top for a bit of extra storage. Splendid. In the back, have a little look. <laughs> Cozy little space. I've gone for the old uh, old school uh, feel for it to provide a little bit of coziness on the road. Got these lovely tapestries. This one will remind me of home, old shepherd and his and shepherd and his yowls and his sheepdog. Remind me of my home in North Yorkshire. This one of the shipping port remind me of my old man. He's a bit of a sailor. But the tapestries also solve, uh, also kill two birds with one stone. Because when you're asleep in a little van, the perspiration coming off your body, the moisture rises up hits the cold root metal roof of the van and then you wake up to it raining and you end up getting all damp. So these tapestries will just stop that condensation a little bit They'll uh, and uh, any water as well, they'll just trap it and it can dry out through the day without uh, interfering with everything. Here I've got my little kitchen, just everything very simple, quickly made but it works, everything's secured so it doesn't rattle around and drive you absolutely crazy when you're on the road. A little kettle here uh, as well. I need to replace that with a leather strap, I think. A little bit more classy. Just a very simple little bucket cut off and that just stops that all sliding around. My water tank. One of the things, I've done quite a bit of touring, and one of the things you want in, in, in a van when you're uh, actually driving around a bit and you're not just sat in campsites all the time, you want to be able to um, stop and go quickly. You don't want to be messing around, organising everything all the time. Um, before you drive so I've tried to make everything so it can be quickly secured and that it's not um, yeah not in a permanent state of continually reorganizing everything so got a little set of drawers down there for my kitchen stuff got a uh, my clothes box got a little cool box here haven't worked out how to s where this light will be secured at present look at that little Bobby Dazzler he's running off my solar power which is down here I've got in here my little uh, lithium battery powered uh, solar unit which will be getting charged continuously. They can charge also when I'm on the road with the panels just just flat up there. Um, got me old thermometer up there for when I get into northern climbs and go at sub-zero. Another little storage box up here. Simple, it's all just screwed on. Then uh, down here, I've got my, um, I've got this beautiful little stove. I'm going to be plumbing in a flue uh, over the next couple of days for that, which is very special for in a van. Look, you see, I can have an open fire. Well, I can stop and have an open fire with the doppelganger before I take off on the next leg of the tour. Yes, and then we've got just with a storage space all locked down. I've got my great axe there ready to um if any trees fall across my path 
got my uh, longbow, obviously, an Englishman needs to travel with his longbow, and uh, my little bushcraft axe there, so that, obviously, I won't be needing this stove in the summer months, but um, when I want to travel around uh, megalithic sites in Britain as well, I want to start doing that. Um, I've got the, I can nip outside with my little bushcraft axe, um, get a bit of uh, dead wood, and light myself a fire and keep nice and cosy. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's the inside of the van. I'm rather pleased with it. It's very cosy. I've slept in it a couple of times already and uh, it's lovely. It's lovely. Right homely it is. A very compact little living space, you see. Personally, I prefer a little van because you can be sneaky in a little van. You can park that up anywhere and nobody realises you're even camping or you're, uh, nobody bothers you. Whereas if you're in a big blooming mobile home or whatever, a proper camper van, people get fidgety and as I say, oh, you can't park here. Whereas this little fella, you can park it anywhere. Down in a little valley near a river on that little lay-by, that beautiful little spot, you can sneak this fellow in there and uh, have the liberty to do that. Yes. So, well, obviously my doppelganger enjoy enjoying that. You might ask where my bed is. I don't sleep in a bed. I sleep in a chair with one eye open and my battle axe across my lap. <laughs> there we go. I just thought I'd update you, let you know I'm still alive and uh, that a plan is afoot. The grand megalithic tour is going to commence in the following weeks. Obviously, it might be a while before I've got the videos edited and get them ready for release. But uh, let me tell you, I've got something rather special in mind. Something a little bit dreamy. It'll be continuing the theme of my channel trailer. And uh, yeah, something uh, also studying the megaliths. Going to fit that in there. But a little bit of a dreamy, uh, dreamy... Um, flight around uh, around the ancient world too something a little bit um a little bit of living legend <laughs> i'm excited about it hi all right fellas and lasses stay well um thank you for watching take it easy and you'll uh, be getting an update shortly Toodle bit. bye